Hi and welcome back to Mr. P channel. Do you want to play old style retro games on your Chromebook? Stay tuned and I will show you how to do it. Before we start, I would like to say that this will work only with Chromebook with Google Play Store enabled. I have Acer Chromebook i11 and this specific Chromebook has Google Play Store enabled. So if we'll write Google Play, oops, Play Store, that's what I need to write. I can access Google Play Store. So this will work only if your Chromebook can do that. So if your Chromebook can access Google Play Store, you need to download two apps. One of them is called ES File Explorer. It doesn't matter which one you will pick up, free version or paid version, it doesn't matter. And you need to Retro, download Retro Arch. That's the icon. That's the one you need to download. I already downloaded. This app is free. So when you have both apps, ES File Explorer and Retro Arch, you need to find some games. I cannot leave any links down the description below where you can download games, but don't forget, Google is your friend. And if you write, for example, in the search bar, um, Mario Roms. There is a big chance the first links will help you out to downloading games. I already have two games downloaded. Let me show it to you. They are in the downloads folder. Power Blade is Nintendo Entertainment System game, and Punisher, which is Sega Mega Drive game. They both zipped files. I need to leave them zipped exactly how the ROMs should be if you go for example retro no retro pi and yes wiki if you search this first of the links let's say this one will tell me exactly how the ROMs should be presented and do I need anything extra so let's say um, what I'm using now NES so on the right hand side I can choose NES and it will tell me that the games must be in this format. Zipped, NES, SMC, SFC, FIG, SWC, and etc. I like to keep them zipped because they tend to take less space and it's no farthing, nothing, because that's how I downloaded in the first place, zipped file. So you have a game, you have a ES Explorer, and you have RetroArch. Now let me show it to you how to set it up all that to work. You're probably aware that if you leave files in Google in the Chromebook downloads folder, eventually they will be deleted when you're running low on space. Chrome OS will delete first of all everything was in the downloads folder. So we need to move them in safe to a safe place. So if we'll go to uh, my menu and I will run ES Explorer. I will go to my download section and this is two games that is there. So I need to move them to my location basically where they will be safe and won't system won't download uh, delete them. So I click there and do move and I have slash storage slash emulator slash zero and this is a folder retro arch. I go in there and I have another folder which is called ROMs, which I created. To create a folder, you need to click a plus sign and name your folder anything you like and click, click OK and the folder will be create, created. I just created my folder called ROMs. Now I just selected this folder, click OK. And right now if we'll go to this folder, I have these two games there. Now let's run RetroArch to go to my menu and write retro arch but before I do what I need to do is I need to connect my controller so this dis dis will disconnect my mouse take my Xbox 360 controller as you can see it's not flashing anything so we'll plug it in it's flashing and I need to wait until it's solid. So it means it's connected via USB. So let's run RetroArch. And here we are. I'm in RetroArch. 
before I start or before you do anything, you need to make sure that with the controller, you go to a second menu, go down to input, click A, or basically that, that's the button, whatever controller you're going to use, go down and the menu toggle gamepad combo. You can choose whatever you want. I like to keep them or choose at L3, R3. What that does is when you're playing a game, when you press both of these uh, thumbs in, you will go to main menu. That's on the way how you can close the game. Obviously you can uh, totally shut the app down and start again. But don't forget that I, I like to use this way. So leave it this way or change it to this. So I go back and I need to go to a main menu, which is first, online updater, and I need to the, the update core info files. As you can see on the bottom, it's downloaded, extracted, done. That update is finished. Next, I suggest you to update auto config profiles, which helps you to configure the controller for specific games and etc. Oh boy, the way all this is done automatically. And update databases, that's what kind of games, ROMs, etc. can they basically bring all the emulator up to date and you'll be able to play. When all this done, go to configurations, which is still in the first column, and save current configuration. When it's all done, I suggest you to quit the RetroArch and run it again. Now I'm in the RetroArch. Next thing, I am going to go to this plus sign, which is, as you can see there, I need to say scan directories. Now I need to go to a storage emulated zero, find the folder RetroArch, A to get inside, go to ROMs, A to get inside and say scan this directory. And scanning this directory and trying to find all the games that is compatible with this emulator. So back, back, back. So I have Punisher. I have PowerBlade, this chip and deal to that from my previous testing. I can remove that. So I have PowerBlade and I have Punisher. Let's try to play PowerBlade. But before I do, let me make sure that I have my, my save files, which you can find in the second column one before last, directories, all the way down, save files, I would like them to be in the same place where my ROMs are, because I will be able to then make a backup if I need to install this app, I will have my save files ready. So all this done, again, I need to go back all to main first column, configurations, save configurations. You need to do that every time if you do any changes drastically and you need to make sure that everything is saved for next time you run this app. So if I'll go to my NES, PowerBlade, run. And right now it's telling me this is available emulator. Let's for example say you don't have available emulator like right now I chose Sega Mega Drive and there is no available emulators. I have two options, do nothing or download emulator or download core in this situation. So I say yes, and this is all available emulators and cores and etc. that's ready for you to use. So I need to go and find Sega Mega Drive. So where is it? Sega Saturn, which one? Um, I'm gonna use this one. I tried it before, it works. So I'm gonna say this, it's automatically downloads, installs and ready to go. So when I do Punisher, it's right now available for me to select. I say, okay, this has been logged that this game will run with this emulator. And now instead of me choosing um, emulator again, I can run this game. As you can see, the game is started. I have all on-screen displays, uh, buttons, sorry. To take them and put them to hide, there is a button, the pointing down arrow. I press that and that's it. The game is running and I have my controller ready to play this game. So uh, combo, as I mentioned before, so if a game is running, if I press these two, they go back to a main menu where I can save state, load state, do a screenshot, restart the game, close the game, 
options, controls, I can do whatever I like to control. So I want to change the controls. I can do a multiplayer online gaming. I can turn cheats on and etc. So let's close the game. And let's try if uh, Super or NES game is running. Okay, I have already emulated and loaded. So just click OK, it logs in, click A. And I have the game running. So start, start, a bit of sound. So right now, let's see if I can play this. So I wanna play this. So as you can see, no problems at all. And I can I can connect this to my HDTV and play emulated games on my big screen. I love this game. So come on, let me do. Yeah. Come on, come on. So let's say both these in. I go and say save. Game saved. So if we'll go all the way to let's say here, and I want to load. I back where I started. Let's say I'm gonna go and oh no, I've been well, I've been hit. Okay, load and etc. So we can load the game and start the game as many times as you like. So both in. I go all the way down. Close the content, and that's it. And this is a emulator running on a. Chromebook or Google Play Store enabled. This is the best way for you to play retro games on your Chromebook device. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to click like. I appreciate if you will subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.